This is Nick with Logos by Nick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can trace over an image to create 8 bit characters using GIMP. So, we'll go ahead and get started here in GIMP. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can update GIMP with this new interface and these updated icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. So, uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is open up the image we want to use as a reference. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be on a white background, it could just be on any background you want. We're going to trace over the subject here. And the first thing we want to do is set up our grid. So I'm going to go to view and click the button that says show grid. <clears throat> now, if you notice here, there's little uh, squares going over the entire image. If your grid is too small or too big based on the image, it, it really depends on the size of the image you'll be using. You can edit the size of your grid by going to edit preferences. And if you go to, I believe it's default grid down here, you can change the spacing, the width and the height of the grid in there. So I already have mine preset to this image. I have it set to uh, 50. I believe the default is 10, but for this image I used 50. So uh, that's set as it is. I'm going to go to view and I want to turn on snap to grid as well. And what I'll do now is I'm going to duplicate this layer. Actually, no, you know what? I'm going to create a new layer by clicking the button that says create a new layer. And we're going to want to choose transparency and go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to zoom in over the top left part of this image right here just by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. And what I'm going to do is first I'm going to click on our dog image here, our subject. And I'm going to grab the dropper tool, which is over here. Uh, the keyboard shortcut is uh, O on the keyboard, the letter O. So I would recommend using the keyboard shortcuts throughout this tutorial because we'll be going back and forth here. And I want to create, I want to uh, fill in this box first. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on that segment right there just to grab a sample of that color and, and set that as the foreground color. And then I'll click on our layer, our new layer up here, and I'll grab the rectangles tool, which is the letter R on the keyboard. And I'm just going to click and drag on the grid to create a little square right there. And once I've created that square, I'll go to Edit, Fill with Foreground Color. And the keyboard shortcut for that, as you can see, is Control and the Comma key. And I would recommend using that as well. So we filled in that individual square right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the entire image repeating this process. I'll click on the original image. Uh, I'll create another square right here. I'm going to click the. Uh, I'm going to grab the dropper tool by pressing O on the keyboard and grab a little sample of that color right there. And I'll click on the new layer and hit Control, comma to fill it in. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to press R to get back to the rectangle tool, create another rectangle, go to the pasted layer, press O for the dropper, click and drag over that, go back to this uh, main layer, hit Control, comma to fill it in. And by now you should pretty much get the idea. I'm going to press R to go back to the rectangle tool, create a, a, a square going in there, Click on this layer and press O to get the dropper tool and grab a sample of that color. The reason I'm clicking on this original layer is that in order for the dropper tool to grab a, uh, a, a sample of a color, it has to be, it has to be, you have to have the layer selected of the image you want to select the color from. If I have this transparent layer selected and I'm clicking on it, it's not going to grab that color. So we have to make sure we're using this layer right here. And again, I'm just going to grab a sample of that, come back to this layer, hit Control, comma to fill that in. And I'm just going to go through and do this again. As you can see here, it's pretty simple. It's a bit of a repetitive process. If you go through all of the steps, um, eventually you'll end up with an image sort of like this here. What I did for the thumbnail, I just filled in half of it. But you should get the idea pretty much. Once you've, uh, let me fill in a little more of this actually. Once you've filled in, let me hit Control, comma to fill that in. Let me create one more square here. And I'll show you what you can do once you're done. Grab a sample of that color in there, come back to this layer, control comma, and I'm going to go to edit, select none, well, you know, select none. And once you're done, let's say like you're finished, what you could do is go to view, and where it says show grid, you could turn that off. You could turn off the visibility of the image layer, and you'll have your 8 bit character right about right here. And what you could do is go ahead and export that as a PNG or, you, you know, use it however you'd like. So that's pretty much how you can go about creating an 8-bit character from any image using GIMP. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.